So Sony have recently announced that the PSVR headset has sold over 5 million headsets worldwide. But I've noticed that people out there are interpreting this information in different ways. So it might be kind of confusing to know whether or not like 5 million headsets is that good. Is that bad? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and interpret this information in my own way. And I'm going to try and explain my reasoning. I'm going to try and put the PSVR sales into context. Okay, so the crux of the issue here that I'm noticing anyway is that the comparisons that people are making. So for example, the PS4 has sold through 106 million units. So the people are putting the 5 million that the PS4 has sold, they're comparing it to that number. And when you compare it to 106 million, obviously it looks really, really low. Another one I see is with Microsoft's Xbox Connect over on the Xbox 360 back in those days. That one sold 35 million units and again you compare that with the 5 million of the PSVR and yes the 5 million looks low again. But I think both of those comparisons should never be met in the first place and I will explain why. So I believe that the PSVR is a platform and not necessarily a peripheral. Even though it does take all the boxes of what a peripheral device is and I do recognize that too and what further makes this all so much more difficult is that the PS VR is part of the first generation of VR headsets therefore nobody has anything else to compare to right so they're they're going to these other things to try and try and make sense of these numbers and this is why we're seeing comparisons to the PS4 comparisons to the Kinect stuff like that so why do I think that the PS VR is a platform rather than a peripheral well I have a few reasons so my first reason is that it has its own games that can only be played on the PS VR so this at least differentiates it from the PS4 so there's certain games for example Firewall, Astrobot, whatever you can't just play these on a PS4 you need that PS VR headset but you might be thinking what about the Kinect the Kinect had its own games that could only be played with the Kinect and not just 360 only. That brings me to reason number two. PSVR headset costs the price of a new platform. So the PSVR initially sold for $399, euros, whatever. And that is the exact same price that the PS4 launched at. It's the same price that the PS4 Pro launched at. Whereas the Kinect then, for example, launched at $150, which is much more affordable. And that's the same price that Microsoft are selling their Xbox Elite controllers right now. Now I understand that uh, price points aren't exactly scientifically backing up the point I'm trying to make, but it is something to consider. 399 is the kind of money you consider putting down on a platform, not necessarily a peripheral. Reason number three is that the PSVR has its own peripherals. So what I'm talking about the move controller, the aim, the 3D rudder, these things that you need to play certain PSVR games. Now I understand you have a point there with the move controllers. So the move controller initially launched with PS3, and yes, the PS4 does support it, and even Dreams, the flat game, does support the move controllers. But Sony have certainly started moving away from using moves in flat games, and they're kind of just being exclusively used in PSVR titles. So, for example, even Dreams, for example, is going to get PSVR support, so that will be a PSVR game. And then you have the aim controller and the 3D rudder. These things are only going to be used with PSVR. Not to mention the PlayStation camera is also needed for tracking on the PSVR, and the camera is another peripheral. That's that's much more in line with the Kinect comparison, if you ask me, than the PSVR itself. So, I mean, how often do we see a peripheral that needs m like multiple other peripherals? or at least uses multiple other peripherals in order to function. Not very often, I don't think, but that's not my last reason. Now my reason number four, my last reason, is the Oculus Quest. So the Oculus Quest released recently on, well it's not even on anything, that's the point, okay? So the Oculus Quest is not tethered to a PC like the, Ver the Rift and the Vive and that kind of stuff. It is truly its own platform. I don't think anyone can deny that. It runs by itself, no wires, no PC needed. And why does that mean that the PS Viewer is also its own platform? Well, because the PS Viewer is in direct competition with the Quest. So as the saying goes, birds of a feather compete together, you know? Therefore, if the Quest is its own platform and it's competing with the PS Viewer, then surely PS Viewer is its own platform too. So there's my argument anyway of why the PS Viewer should be considered its own platform rather than just a peripheral device. And now I realize that many of my reasons are full of holes, but hopefully when you put those reasons together, it strengthens the whole argument as a whole. So now that I've convinced you all that the PS Viewer is a platform and not just a peripheral, Let's take a look at that 5 million figure again. It is the first generation of VR headset. It's part of the first generation of VR headsets. It has hit 5 million before any other headset has done so. And it has done all this 
in Americas that hasn't quite breached mainstream just yet. So yeah, I think 5 million is a pretty impressive number for the PS viewer to have hit in that context. Now, you can look at how quickly Sony met it from 4 million to 5 million compared to 3 million to 4 million. You might say to yourself, okay, s sales have slowed down significantly, and that's definitely an argument that could be had that's a discussion for another day maybe but the point of this video is to you know let's not cheapen the milestones that the ps viewer is hitting by comparing it to these other things that it shouldn't be compared to in the first place anyway that's it for this video lads and ladies i'm sure a few people out there will disagree with what i'm saying if so let me know all about it in the comments below i'd be happy to hear it and before i end the video let me give a thanks to my patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now thank you very much lads i do appreciate it let me give a special shout out to columbus thomas the third Pete Hawkins, Tradition, and Crumb. These boys are supporting me on the top tier over on Patreon, and I appreciate that very much. If you want to help out on Patreon too, link will be in the description below. But if you don't want to do any of that shit, just the usual like, you know, share, and all that kind of usual shite would help me out big time too, and I appreciate that very much. Finally, if you're enjoying the music that you're listening to in the background of these videos, then check out Decepticon.com for more of that goodness. That is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.